This is the business end of the weaver. Chemical and power plants, derelict docks, it ain't pretty. But I think it's really quite interesting. The Daniel Adamson, as seen in the previous video, is normally tied up here if you'd like to go and pay a visit or have a tour around her. We're about to pass under the railway viaduct and the M56 viaduct can be seen beyond that. The Weaver Motorboat Club in Sutton Keys. Now if you missed part two, which is the most beautiful section of this wonderful river, please use the link here or at the end of the video. Uh, it seems we've left the, the rural weaver, uh, we've just come under Sutton Weaver Swing Bridge and all of a sudden it's all quite industrial and noisy. Uh, that was the M56 motorway bridge we've just been under and uh, yeah we're heading towards Runcorn, Western Point. Your old stamping ground used to live there. For a short while I did, That's, it wasn't a stamping ground. Wasn't it? <laughs> that was Warrington when I was younger. Oh, I see. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> I must admit, I was quite surprised to see a rowing club here, nestled amongst the power plants and chemical works. But I guess upstream of here provides more picturesque rowing. And strangely enough, these guys were the last people we saw that day. This is Rock Savage Power Station on the right, generating enough power for about 800,000 homes. I don't really know what to expect from today's cruise. I'm not one for towns and cities, but I'm fascinated by social history. I'm also intrigued by the Manchester Ship Canal, which I've never really seen. Well, apart from in the mid-80s, when I had to photograph the CEO of a large manufacturing business nearby. His office was on the top floor and had a large window overlooking fields. Or so I thought. As I was looking through the viewfinder giving him directions, a bloody great ship started moving slowly across behind him. I was absolutely bewildered. A thin finger of land now separates the navigation from the river weaver. And on the right bank, the industry continues unabated. Marsh lock dead ahead, and that is the entrance to the Manchester Ship Canal. You need to book with the CRT to go through Marsh lock. And you have to have all your paperwork sorted with the Manchester Ship Canal before booking. Last year, when the Anderton boat lift broke down, several narrowboats were stranded on the Weaver. So the CRT arranged a convoy to pass through the lock and they were then guided along the Ship Canal to Ellesmere Port. Must have been quite a nerve-wracking experience, I reckon. We'll stop off and take a good look at Marsh Lock on the way back, which you can see at the end of the video. It's quite something looking out along the Mersey Estuary and the Ship Canal. Us saving our plastic bottles or trying to cut down, yeah, it is important. This is the biggest problem. This is what needs to change. Indeed. Industry needs to be more accountable for environmental degradation. Going past the now decommissioned ICI power plant, constructed in the 1920s to serve the surrounding chemical industry. Good to see some renewables.
Christ Church just coming into view, a now redundant listed building. Off to the right is the lock up onto the now disused Runcorn and Western Canal. This was a mile and a third link from the Weaver to the Bridgewater Canal, mainly for the transportation of salt. Not sure what this rusty little shed is all about. Clearly, White's Bridge is too low for us to pass under, so I want to jump off to see if I can get it to swing open. Getting off, though, is easier said than done. There appeared no safe place to land. We reverse and try to find a mooring spot. Still nothing suitable. So we reverse further and turn about at the lock junction. Eventually we can pull in and tie up on the old western docks. Reverie looks a little lost, moored where once much larger vessels would have been. I go for a little wander. At the now abandoned Western Point docks, the ship canal is right in front of me. In the middle distance, the disused Western Mersey side locks. And beyond that, the Mersey estuary and Frodsham Marsh's wind farm. Western Mersey Lock is 600 by 45 feet. Acts of Parliament prohibited bargemen from having to work on Sundays. When originally built in 1841, the church stood on a spit of land jutting out into the Mersey. Later, the Weaver Navigation was built on one side, and later still, the Ship Canal on the other, leaving the church on its own little island. It's said to be the only church in Britain on an uninhabited island. In 1885 the Weaver was dredged to a depth of 12 foot, having been a mere 4 foot 6 a hundred years previously. The last locks built on the Weaver have a 15 foot sill, but the planned dredging to that depth never took place. After a brief tour of Western Point, we head back to Marsh Lock, getting another look into the ship canal at Ice Sluice Footbridge. Marsh Lock is deserted, apart from some rowdy Canada geese. Cutting the Manchester Ship Canal began in 1885, at times employing 17,000 men. The 36 mile channel was cut to a depth of 26 feet and can accommodate vessels of 530 feet. Despite being 40 miles inland, Manchester was soon to become Britain's third busiest port. The largest lock on the canal is 600 feet by 80. Huge sluices in the distance, 
let water from the ship canal into the River Mersey. This is a barren, bleak place with an atmosphere all of its own and a sort of desolate attraction which serves to make me appreciate more the wonders and beauty of the natural world. I've got to say it's been fantastic to explore this very special river. Yes, I've even enjoyed the historical and often derelict industrialisation. We will definitely return one day, hopefully with sunnier weather. <laughs>